Hello everyone, Mr. John here from Air Team Institute with this week's Thursday tidbit where we're going to do a sample task from the LA Math Field Day coming up this week. This is going to be a one part video, no two parter like some of the other ones, inspired by the fact that this competition is this weekend. So this Saturday is the 2023 LA Math Field Day. This is run by the LA County Office of Education in partnership with Air Team. We've done some different things to help out with that. One of the things we're proud of and I'm proud of is the fact that we've been the task writers since 2017. Nowadays, students in grades 4th through 11th, so 4 through 8, normal grade level stuff, then math 1, 2, 3 for 9th, 10th, 11th graders there as well. These are team competitions and they're broken up into a couple of rounds. So you might have seen this CU at the title here. We're going to look at this conceptual understanding task sample today. Then there's also a problem solving task there. Those actually are done by the entire teams working together. The last set, right, this multiple cho choice set there, right, the more computation stuff, those are done individually, but everything is graded as a team. There's no individual scores. Everything is the teams of students, and there's a big premium put on the students working together. Now I'm going to link to our website where we say a little bit more about this, have some other links, have some more sample stuff, including the setup of the task we're going to look at today. But let's jump into a sample and we're kind of going to do one question associated with this. So this task was titled Chia Pets. So we have three people, Laura, Thomas, and Claire. They're buying these chia pets. They're tracking the growth of the kind of plants, right? The grass that's growing, stuff like that on their pets. And they're planting stuff on Monday and then they're monitoring the growth of the plants throughout the week. And we have three different ways of describing the growth. So Laura's giving an equation. Thomas is giving this proportional relationship. Claire is giving a chart for things there as well. Now, in general, there are four parts to this task. The CU task will be broken down for the competition. Four sub-problems, part one, that's worth 10%, two, 20%, three, 30%, four, 40%, right? So these different parts are growing in complexity, more parts to those parts, right, when you're answering that task. But they all involve a single set. And the conceptual understanding in particular is meant to, right, challenge students' understanding of how to explain things. So the actual sub-problems or things like that might not be too difficult, but students are asked to explain things, sometimes using different aids or manipulatives, different materials that way as well. So we don't have time to do a full task or things like that there. We do have some samples in the site that I link in the description below. But let's look at a sub problem sample that could be asked for something like this. And we're not going to entirely answer these questions, but just explore this a little bit. So whose plant grows the most in the first two days from Monday to Wednesday? Whose plant grows the most in the next two days, Wednesday to Friday? And then which of the plant's growths seem to be linear? Explain your answer there. And one more time, I do want to stress this explaining of your answer, right? We need students when they're doing this to explain what they mean by linear. How can you check if it's linear, right? There's not one way to do this. There might be different ways of approaching it, different things you might need to calculate for the different equations and stuff like that here as well. 
So let's at least explore what's needed to answer these questions and talk about them plant by plant. So Laura said she modeled her plant's growth using this equation, h equals 0.125d squared. So right, first thing you might need to do, right, and students need to recognize this, if we're given an equation here, maybe it's good to kind of look at a few of the different days there, right? So if we look at the day and then we look at the height, that is something we might want to make a table of first. And even stuff like this is important to recognize that there could be some challenges here, right? So if we think about day zero, right, note that Monday could be described and is described in this setup as day zero, right? Then we also need day two. Day two is our Wednesday day. And looking ahead a little bit, right, then of course, Friday is going to be our day four. So, right, don't necessarily think one, two, three, four, five for the days. Of course, we need to be starting with day zero and a height of zero on that day as well. Now, day two, two squared is four, four times this, right? Twice times this is a fourth, right? You might want to recognize, and when students are explaining work, right, they might want to make note of some of these things as well, right? You can make note of things like, wait, one, to five as a decimal, right? This decimal is one eighth. And that might help us, or it definitely helps me with these calculations then, right? Then we have four eighths, so the height is one half after these two days. And then the height is, right, now we have four squared is 16, so the height is two at the end. So, right? Monday to Wednesday then, we can see that this grows a half of an inch. I think that was the correct units there, right? Wednesday to Friday, we can have one and a half or three halves inches in that case there. And it's pretty easy to see that this is not linear. Now, what are some explanations for not linear? right? If you're maybe a little bit more advanced and comfortable with these things, right? One explanation is the fact that we have an equation. You could look at this equation here. It's a quadratic. It has this squared term. That definitely means that we are not a linear equation, right? The other thing you could look at here is say that the growth, right, over these two-day periods is not equal. And that, of course, is another way of kind of saying what we have there. So, right, all of those things here can tell us that this is not linear in this case. So that gives us a little bit of a flavor of what might be going on, how you could explain things. Just to be complete with the different people, let's look at some of these other ones there, right? So Thomas said his plant grew proportionally to the number of days with a rate of 0 0.5 inches per day. Now, again, right, you might want to think about this first, right? We can maybe look at this, and as soon as we see this proportional to, right, the number of days, we can say that this is linear, right? So maybe we say right away that this is a linear expression. Maybe then we can use that to help, right? Well, if it's growing a half of an inch per day, right? We have two days here, so that's one inch. And we can say, hey, that's exactly the same for Wednesday to Friday. So this is one inch there as well. Right? We could make a table here too if that helps, but this is kind of one way we could talk about this as well. Now, just going back to the questions, comparing these a little bit, right? In the first two days, Thomas's plant 
grows more than Laura's. In the second two days, Laura's grows more, right? We could compare those things that way as well. Now, just to be complete, let's look at the last one, which is in some sense the easiest because they give us these values as well, right? Height in inches Monday to Wednesday, that is 1.5 inches of growth, right? Zero to 1.5, right? Wednesday to Friday, this is not as much. It only goes to 8.75. So this is actually less than an inch, 0 0.375 there. Again, we can say that this one is not linear as well. Those differences between Monday to Wednesday, Wednesday to Friday are not the same. This plant actually grew the most in the first two days, right? This plant grew the least in the last two days, kind of there as well. And there's a lot of other things you could explore with this as well. Might want to look at the graphs of these. Could you use this data to make predictions? Explain why those predictions might work or might not work. That's what a lot of this conceptual understanding task is about. But that'll do it for this week's video. Like I said, check out the link below if you want to learn a little more about Math Field Day. We'll come back next week for a new topic. Like this video, subscribe to our channel to make sure you get further updates later on. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next week. Goodbye.